ohms, watts, cabs, amps, what does it all mean and how do you go about getting yourself a versatile bass rig that won't blow itself up? I'm about to explain it all to you guys right now, but make sure you stick around to the end because I will also show you my secret custom device that I had made that allowed me to be able to make three rigs out of just two cabs. Hey guys, Clay here from Clay's Bass Lessons where each week I help you guys master the bass, find your groove and put a little music in your life. So today's lesson is a little bit different because we're looking at bass gear tips and tricks. After I got this message through my Facebook page this week asking for help about pairing amp heads and cabs together. So I'm going to help you guys wrap your heads around this complicated business of amps and ohms and watts and all of that business. So let's get into it. But first of all, if it's your first time here on the channel, I do regular bass videos and lessons, so why don't you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to become part of the bass squad. And if you've got time, why don't you head on over to my Facebook page and give it a like as well so you can keep up to date with the latest bass goodness. So first things first, when you're wanting to buy yourself a bass amp, there are two ways to go. Firstly, you could buy a combo. These are single pre-made units that have a well-paired speaker and amp combination in one speaker cabinet together, hence why they are called combos. These are great because they don't require any knowledge about power level pairing and they are just ready to go and the louder you want to go, the bigger one you buy. The downsides though are they are incredibly heavy and they just are the size they are. Which means if you want a smaller one for a small venue, you have to have another combo for that gig and a larger one for a larger venue, you need another combo for that gig. Some of the larger combos do have the ability to run a second cabinet off of them as well, but in general they just are the one single unit. The other way to go is to pair a separate amp head and speaker cabinet together. The amp head is where your power comes from and can actually be the heaviest part of your rig sometimes, but now that it's no longer paired inside your speaker cabinet as well, it's much easier to carry. The only downsides is you need to know your power ratings and impedance well so you don't accidentally overheat and blow up your amp heads and speakers. The only other downside is that you now need extra cables to connect your amp head to your cabinets, which isn't a major issue unless you go ahead and forget your speak on cable at your gig, in which case now it's a really really big issue because there will be no sound coming out of your speakers if you can't connect them to the amp head. So now I'm going to explain this whole business of watts and amps and pairing the amp head to the right level of impedance on your speaker cabinets. And this is where people get things very confused and it's easy to get it wrong and it can lead to flaming disastrous bass rig results. Believe me, I know I've been there and it, it hurts, it's not fun. <laughs> So first of all, watts. Watts is basically how much power you have, but be aware there are two types of watt ratings that you're going to come across. There is the watt rating on your amp head itself, and then there is the watt rating on the speaker cabinet. So when you read the watt rating on your amp head, that's telling you the amount of power that your amp head can put out. When you see the watt ratings on your cabinets, however, this has nothing to do with the amount of power that you have but it's merely telling you the amount of power that you can send that cabinet before you run the risk of damaging those speakers and overpowering them. So when you go looking for the watt rating on your amp head, you will likely notice that there are two watt ratings given. It's usually gonna say something along the lines of 800 watts at four ohms and 500 watts at eight ohms. Most bass amps are advertised at their 4 ohm rating, which means if you see a bass amp head that says that it runs at 1000 watts, it's most likely telling you that it runs at 1000 watts at 4 ohms. So what the heck does that mean? Well, that brings us to the dreaded section of impedance. So ohm ratings or impedance as it's known, is about how much resistance your speakers are putting on your amp head. Think of it a bit like this, your amp head is like the water supply to your house and your speakers and their ohm resistance are like the tap. The more power your amp has, the more water pressure you're being sent from the town supply, but the more ohms you have, the tighter your tap is and the less water that actually comes out. Less ohms means a looser tap and more power, but nearly every bass amp on the market is really only designed to go to four ohms. If you turn your tap on even more than that, 
and say run your base rig at 2 ohms, it's kind of like having the tap fall off altogether and you will look like one of those epic plumbing fails that you see on YouTube where the plumber is suddenly trying to plug up the entire town water supply trying to come through to them at once. What this will mean for you is your amp will overrun and overheat and end up hopefully thermal shutting down before that overheating results in smoke and fire and, and that kind of stuff. Which can happen and is actually what happened to me and my original Mesa Boogie base rig that you may have seen a few years ago in my older videos. What happened with that rig is I didn't run it incorrectly but it had been repaired rather poorly and it ran fine at 8 ohms but the first time I ran it at 4 ohms it overloaded and didn't thermal shut down and became its own wee pyrotechnic smoke display on stage. It was not, not a good time. So now I hear you asking me though, but Clay, how do I change what ohms my amp head is running at? Well that all depends on what type of cabinet you connect, how you connect it, and how many of them you connect. So listen closely. So pretty much every base cabinet on the market has the option of being purchased in either a 8 ohm or 4 ohm version of itself. So you need to be very careful and decide which one of these is going to suit you best before you buy it. So what that means is if you connect one 8 ohm speaker cabinet to your amp head then your amp head will send it the amount of watts that it is rated for at the 8 ohm rating. But if you connect one 4 ohm cabinet then the amp head will send it the amount of watts it's rated for at the 4 ohm rating. So now you want to make sure that the cabinet that you're connecting has a watt handling rating that can handle the amount of watts it's being sent from your amp head. But you can get away with being slightly over the power rating of your cabinet so long as it's not too far over and you aren't running your amp head at really high volume levels. But I'll explain more on this later when I show you guys how I have my own rig set up. But things get much trickier when you want to connect two cabinets to your amp head. When two cabs are connected to your amp head you will either double or half the ohmage of your rig depending on how you connect them. If you plug in your two cabinets daisy chained, so one cable from the amp head to cabinet 1 and then another cable from the out of cabinet 1 to cabinet 2, this will be in series and it will double your impedance. This is not a good thing. This will mean that your entire rig is either running at 8 ohms or even 16 ohms. Nothing's going to blow up or anything in this scenario, but what will happen is that you're only going to receive half or even a quarter of your total power from your amp and that's going to be split across two different cabinets. So it's going to sound very weak and empty and would probably actually be louder if you just plugged one of those cabinets in by itself. Unless of course you have one of those unique cabinets out there that happens to have a parallel output on the back of it. Some do, some Galen Kruger ones have, I've seen them on those, and in this case this doesn't apply but in general don't daisy chain your cabs. But rather what you should be doing is connecting your two cabinets to your amp head in parallel. What this means is you take two different cables and you plug them into the two separate outputs on the back of your amp head. One of them goes from the amp head straight down to cabinet 1 and the other one comes out of the amp head straight down to cabinet 2. In this situation the ohms of your rig are now going to halve. So if you connect two 8 ohm cabinets to your amp head in parallel the rig will now be running at 4 ohms and you will get full power from your amp head which is great and what you want to happen. But if you connect two 4 ohm cabinets in parallel to your amp head the rig will now and the amp head will now run at 2 ohms and it will let too much power through, overheat and shut down. This also goes for if you were to connect one 4 ohm cab and one 8 ohm cab the total will end up going down to about 2.67 ohms and again the same issue will apply and this is bad because basically no amp heads out there are really designed to run under 4 ohms. There are a few exceptions to that like the Ampeg tube series vin big vintage heads but most of them nowadays, this is a general rule, just take it, do not run your amp head under 4 ohms. It will end up in it shutting down and freaking out. So long story short, if you plan on using two cabinets in your setup, only buy 8 ohm cabs. 4 ohm cabs are only designed to run by themselves and get full power from your amp head. So let's say you have now connected two 8 ohm cabinets to your head and your rig is now running at 4 ohms and your amp is sending full power. Let's say that full power amount is 800 watts like it is on my amp head. 
What that will mean is that it's not sending 800 watts total to both cabinets, but it is sending 400 watts, half of that value to each. It's splitting the total power of the amp and sending them an equal amount. Which brings me to showing you guys what I'm doing with my own rig, because this is basically what I have going on in my setup. So in my base rig, I have the Little Mark Tube 800 base head, and it runs at 800 watts at 4 ohms and 500 watts at 8 ohms. Then I have the Mark Base 210 front ported cabinet and the matching series front ported 410 underneath that. And both of these cabinets are 8 ohms. Now, usually I would suggest that you only pair together two similar power rated cabinets together when you're using two cabs. Like for example, two of the same 4x10 or a 4x10 with a similar power rated 15 or 18 inch sub speaker underneath. But the only problem with this is that you only get two rig options when you do this. You can use a medium sized rig which is one cab or a really large rig with two cabs and that's really all you can do. I play a lot of local venues where the 2x10 is plenty of volume on its own. So by buying a 210 and a 410 I was able to come up with three different rig options. I can take the 210 for a small venue and then I can take the quad on its own for a medium sized venue and when I'm doing a large venue big stage stuff I can take both. So when I take just one cabinet to a gig they are running at 8 ohms and being sent 500 watts from my head which is totally fine for the power rating of my quad bin but for the 210 it's 100 watts over its total power. But for me I will never run my amp head more than about 5 on the volume knob when I do this so I'm not overpowering it and if I ever have to go over about a 5 on the volume knob I will just take the quad bin instead to the gig instead of just the 210. The problem that I encountered when running these two cabs though at the same time is that the split of power is even to each cabinet which means when I'm running at 800 watts at 4 ohms of two cabinets they are being sent 400 watts each. And there are four speakers in the quad, but there are only two speakers in the 210, which means the quad speakers are being pushed at half the power that the ones at the top are. The ones at the top are being sent 200 watts each, and the ones in the quad are only getting 100 watts. So my 210 was being overdriven and pushed too hard when I ran the two cabs. So luckily for me, I have an amazing engineering and musician friend who is also the creator and founder of Flux FX Guitar Pedals. Check him out on Instagram and in the links below because he also makes the incredible Liquid Ambience pedal, which is the one that I use to create those awesome massive reverb sounds in the Stranger Things theme song video that I did a couple years ago. So I spoke to Mike about the issue that I was having with the 210 being sent too much power and he came up with this incredible idea and he built me this. Now it doesn't look like much but what it is is it's a custom built inline impedance increaser. I don't know if that's the official term for it but that's what I'm going with. But what it basically does is it adds the right amount of extra impedance onto the cable running to the 210 cab only which manages to reduce the total power being sent to the 210 by half, which is perfect so that I end up getting 200 watts being sent to my 210 and 400 watts still being sent to my 410, and I get a nice even sound of 600 watts from my 800 watt head. So that's how I ended up managing to get three evenly nicely balanced rigs out of just two different cabinets. I will say as well, be aware that this doesn't apply if you happen to buy a bi-amp head. I haven't seen many of those around for a while, but I know they still exist, and my first amp head was a bi-amp, which meant it had two separate 500 watt heads in it. In that scenario, you would want to have each of them running into four ohm cabinets. So I hope this video has helped you guys finally wrap your head around the crazy business of amps and cabs and watts and ohmages. And if you have any further questions, please fire away in the comment section below and I'll get back to them as quickly as I can. Or one of the other awesome Bass Squad members who follow the channel will most likely help you out too. Then why don't you click over here to see my Mark Bass Amp Head unboxing and review video that I did for this particular amp. Or click here if you want to check out that Stranger Things theme bass arrangement that I did a wee while ago. But that's all for today guys, so until next time keep it funky and I'll see you in the next video.